Today's episode is brought to you by Path 11 TV, inspiring entertainment for the spiritually curious. With a Path 11 TV membership, you get instant access to over 100 hours of exclusive video content that explores consciousness, healing, and life after death. Also with the Path 11 TV membership, you can attend our monthly events and live streams free. In the past few months, we've already had medium readings with Drew Callie and Suzanne Northrup, along with a numerology session with Nicene Siegel, and Chinese face readings with Marla Goldberg. Join us for our next event, July 21st, for another gallery reading, this time with medium Mark Schmidt. You can start your Path 11 TV membership for just $9.99 a month, or get two months free by getting an annual membership. Podcast listeners can save even more by using coupon code PODCAST30. This will take 30% off, making your first year only $70. That's only 20 cents a day. Don't hesitate because this offer is only good for a limited time. All membership plans have a seven-day free trial. So start streaming with your membership to Path 11 TV today by visiting path11tv.com and start satisfying your spiritual curiosity with our exclusive library of inspiring entertainment. Now let's get to today's show. Hi, and thanks for tuning in to the Path 11 podcast. I am your host, April Hanna. At the Path 11 Podcast, we are here trying to deliver leading-edge research on consciousness, healing, and metaphysics. And just like you, we are trying to answer the big questions about life. Who are we? Why are we here? And what is our purpose? We hope by listening to our podcast, it will make each day you live on Earth a little easier to understand. And now for today's podcast. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the PAP 11 podcast today. If you love astrology or want to know more about it, that is going to be what we're going to talk about today. But we're talking about evolutionary astrology. I have no idea what that is. So I'm really excited, which is why I wanted to bring my guests on to the PAP 11 podcast today. Deb Perrette is our guest. She is a karmic success coach for entrepreneurs. With her secret sauce of evolutionary astrology, she shows clients how to grow their business with less stress and overwhelm and more abundance and joy. Couldn't we all use that? She has a few ideas that she would like to discuss on the podcast today. We're going to talk about why astrologers are the new business coaches, how astrology can ignite sales for your business. We're also going to integrate in some past lives because what I'm learning before we actually hit the record button is that evolutionary astrology can also help us with some of the past lives that we've had. So I am very excited to introduce you to Deb, and she is also giving you guys a free gift. How nice of her. She is going to give all of our listeners a free birth chart, which includes a video orientation to the components of your birth chart. And the only catch is you have to sign up for her newsletter. You're going to go to her website at the end of this podcast, and you have to request this by emailing her. And we will put all that in the show notes as well. So Deb, welcome to the Path 11 podcast. It's lovely to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Okay. Before we even get into what evolutionary astrology is, tell me a little bit more about your background. Why were you drawn to astrology and what kind of happened in your life that led you down this path? I have to say that as far back as I can remember, I've always been interested in anything related to in my childhood, we called it ESP, the occult, esoterica. I have always been fascinated by it. But I'm not one of those people who could say, oh, yeah, I spoke to spirits that have passed on when I was a child. It wasn't, I didn't have those direct experiences, but I had a fascination that would not leave me alone. However, I also have a very practical bent. So when it came time to choose a career, I chose a career that was more likely to lead to a stable profession. So I went into education. I was an ESL teacher for many years. I was an educational technologist. And then after I got my PhD, I became a, a college professor preparing the next generation of teachers. I loved all of that. I loved teaching, loved my students. It was all fascinating to me, but I never lost that fascination for, I don't, I don't even know what to call it because every term then seems to be tarnished. And I don't like 
I'm calling it extrasensory because I actually think it's a very natural part of the way our brains are supposed to work. But because our society privileges this kind of left brain, rational, show me the data type that we forget that our intuition, our psychic abilities, our ability to communicate with non-corporeal beings has been so demeaned that people don't even realize that it's a natural part of our abilities. Yeah. So while I was a teacher at the same time, I've been reading tarot cards since I was 21, which was a long time ago. I've taken many, I've spent many hours in psychic development courses, energy healing, past life regression therapy. I've really done a lot. And I've been practicing in a, me in a mediumship in a spirit circle for about, I don't know, six or seven years now. I don't offer mediumship as a service, but it is something that I do privately as a hobby. Um, oh, wait, I, now I need to get to the second part of your question. Yeah. Because I told you about becoming a teacher and it wasn't until about five years ago that the universe intervened because I knew that I was supposed to be working with this more spiritual abilities and ideas, but I didn't want to leave my secure job. So the universe stepped in and intervened and really gave me the opportunity to decide, okay, am I going to continue in higher ed or am I going to be brave and pursue the path that I know in my heart? And it's right there in my birth chart that I meant to pet pursue. So I did it. I love that because I too, over the past couple of years, have been going through that struggle and know that when my soul starts to say, you have to go in this direction, my challenge was giving up more of the clinical mental health field and really moving into the spiritual teacher that I am, which is tough because you go through all of this schooling, right? It's, you got a PhD, I have my master's degree and you do all of this training and stuff like that. And it becomes a part of your identity. It's like you have to work the ego a little bit out of that. But I've learned enough on this journey that if the soul starts to speak and it speaks up louder and louder and you're not paying attention, eventually it will intervene in a way. And I've just been trying to take this path in my life where I'm like, okay, soul, I hear you. I don't need you to intervene with a huge push. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen and I'm going to start to do it. So I really appreciate hearing that you did that. And it you know, just reinforces some of my own experience of what I felt and needed to make that switch as well. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah. And astrology, if I could just chime in, it's the planet Uranus that does that. <laughs> when you have those big surprise life thing where the universe feels like it has to hit you over the head to get you to alter path, because ultimately it is about free choice, but it's Uranus that really pushes us in that direction. Okay. Good to know. And I think that happened in my chart, again, from a different type of astrology, but I think it was in 2019, and it's probably still there because I'm still feeling it. So <laughs> great. Now, so what is the difference between astrology and evolutionary astrology? Because I don't feel like I've ever actually heard this term before, and I just, and I don't know a ton about it. See, it's so weird. I'm fascinated by astrology, and I love it, and I love getting my charts read and hearing about it but I've just never been pulled to research it more. Like I really want to, but I just never do it. I just find it fascinating and I love talking about it all the time. So I get really excited when I have guests like you come on. So what is evolutionary astrology? It's funny because I'm actually like you, because I've always been fascinated but with it. And I learned a little bit here, learned a little bit there. Uh, but it wasn't until I discovered the evolutionary astrology that I realized, aha, this is what I'm meant to do. Evolutionary astrology in a nutshell is just, it's the idea that we are here, we incarnate into a body for specific purpose of learning particular lessons. The soul is eternal. And when we incarnate, we are given a birth chart with all of our life lesson curriculum. And all we have to do <laughs> is pursue those life lessons and we will have a life of of satisfaction, purpose, meaning more joy, less stress. However, we have free will, so we don't always get it right the first time. And as uh, Cherie Carter Scott says in her Rules for Being Human, lessons will be repeated until learned. But for, for evolutionary astrologers, 
the birth chart is a map to what is your past life baggage that is forming your limiting beliefs that you've brought into this life with you that are challenging you and preventing you from growing and evolving towards your life's, your evolutionary intent. And it differs from traditional astrology that way because that is our soul focus, mind the pun. <laughs> S-O-U-L and S-O-L-E focus is on learning the lessons, relieve, releasing the karmic baggage, embracing our evolutionary intent, and the birth chart is our map, should we choose to use it. And you said you hadn't heard of it, so I just wanted to say that there are many people who were a big part in the development of this branch of astrology, but I think that the two that probably made it the most well-known of all is Jeffrey Wolf Green and Stephen Forrest. So I've been studying with Stephen Forrest, so I'm probably most closely aligned to his approach to evolutionary astrology. I agree. Yeah, and I always find, too, like when my clients would come to me, I, I highly recommend people getting their birth chart read because a lot of people feel lost or have like that psychic amnesia where they're like, I don't know why I'm here, what my purpose is or what I'm supposed to do. I know I'm in this job, but I don't feel fulfilled. Can you help me? And I'm like, have you ever had your birth chart read? <laughs> because that'll give you a lot of information and let's start there. So can you explain that a little bit more? Like, how do we come in with this map and these stars and everything knows what we're supposed to be doing? Is it we, the soul that gets to choose that and then the planets align and pop us out at the time we're supposed to be born in order for that karma to happen? Or like, how does it actually work from the beginning? That's a great question. And I'm not sure there are definitive answers for it, but the way I see it, the planets don't have power over us. They do not take action. Yes, the moon does influence the tides on Earth. So we do know that cosmic energy does influence Earth. But in, in the astrology, it's not so much, they're not causing anything, they're reflecting. It's like a mirror image. Sometimes you can't see anything when it's in your own life, but when you look at it elsewhere, then you can see it. So the planets reflect back to us what's going on in our lives, what we need to work on. And as to who decides, I believe that the soul, along with its guides, chooses the life lessons they're going to focus on. You can call it the Parabda kar karma. It, that's the particular karma you're here to work on this time. And together they choose, all right, what time, what planetary alignment would be the right time for you to come into this world to do this work. Gotcha. Okay, interesting. And I'm glad that you said that the planets are more of a reflector because I think the only thing that would be my, maybe it's judgment or criticism or confusion sometimes about astrology is that when I see people get so attached to, oh my God, Mercury is in retrograde and that's why nothing is going right in my life. Or that maybe sometimes people will blame the planets and they're not taking full responsibility or, oh, it's a full moon, so that must be why I'm so moody. But it's, no, just regulate your emotions and learn how to be more in this plateau place rather than feeling or blaming that the moon and the stars and Mercury is the cause for what's all the havoc that's going on in your life. And like you said, I'm sure that there is something because we are energetic beings. I do believe that we come from the stars and all of that, that of course they're going to have an effect. But I like the way that you worded it, that they're reflecting rather than controlling us. So do you want to speak about that? Yes, I actually am glad you brought that up because one thing well, often when people hear that I'm an astrologer, they'll come to me and say, oh, can you help me pick a good time for my wedding? Or can you help me pick a good time for this or a good location? Where should I move to? And um, that's not the astrology that I do. I'm not saying that it doesn't work or it can't work, but I don't think the stars should control your life. All right, the planets. Astrology is not something that should tell you what to do. It is something that should give information and guidance. It should help you find the right questions as opposed to the answers. And I think that's really important because if you have the perfect date for your wedding, it means that both of your families can make it there 
why would you choose some other date just because of an astrological alignment? I'm honestly, and I know I'm, I'm offending some astrologers by saying that, but as for Mercury retrograde, I, I have fun too saying, oh my God, it's Mercury retrograde. My, my, of course my internet went out and it's awkward, but when Mercury goes into retrograde, it is an information for us. It's a time for us to slow down, to rethink, reflect in our communication. Think twice before we speak. Think twice before you, you send that email. And so it's, it feels like, oh, yes, this transit is making me do this. But it's not so much that, but it's reminding you that, okay, you're at a point where it is very likely you are going to say something that is misinterpreted or you're going to say something that you'll regret later at during this period so all it's asking for is for you to just slow down and think twice but yes and, and i do say oh uranus is coming get ready for surprises and shocks it's not that the planet is physically creating these surprises and shocks it's that you're life is ripe for these kind of developments and the uranus transit is it's like the giving you the hello it's the guidance look out watch out it's like the road signs on the road steep hill curve to the left watch out signal ahead i think that's a better suggestion it's not that sign causes the road to curve it's just alerting that you're coming you're approaching a curve in your life and you can either take it 120 miles an hour and just hope for the best, or you can slow down and take it consciously. Yeah, thank you for saying that. And so let's talk a little bit more too about how do you work with entrepreneurs? And this kind of goes into my next question because I love the birth chart stuff and I love astrology. So of course I have consulted people and I think the first astrologer, it was Vedic astrology that I had my first reading. And that was really interesting. I was blown away. I was like, wow, this person knows nothing about me. And he could tell all of this information. And he talked a lot about my business and stuff like that. And everything that he actually had saw in my chart had ended up happening. And he would say things like, oh, I think that you're going to have a second business here or there at, at around this time of this year. And of course it happened. And I was like, wow. And I've, I'm getting the reading thinking, no way. Okay, whatever. Sure. A little skeptical, but, but that's really fascinating. And then there's this other part of me that says, can astrology, I'm being more of a skeptic here, can astrology take away the spontaneity or what you could really learn had you not known about some of this information? So that's where I always feel a little like, I want to know and I want to get this read. And I would like to have a little more information. But sometimes it's really hard to not let the mind totally grasp onto what you've heard. And, okay, I'm supposed to open up this business or something's going to big is supposed to happen in this next year and a half. And then you're sitting and you're waiting and you're living life, but you're like, okay, where's that thing? Where's that thing? The astrologist said it was going to happen. So that's where I struggle with it. It's, I never want to become too dependent on anything. I'd like to use it as a resource, hear it, but sometimes the mind will still be like, okay, they said by September and now it's October. What happened? <laughs> and, and then maybe we'll get into the business part of how you help entrepreneurs, but maybe we can tackle the first part of like people either getting really dependent on these readings or what the birth chart says. And do we lose some of that free will that maybe we would have chosen because we have a little extra knowledge from our astrologers? Yes. So again, you just pinpointed the, another key difference between evolutionary astrology and traditional astrology, because... I will never say this is going to happen. I will say these are the energies that are activating this part of your life right now. How can you turn them to, how can you consciously take control over it so that it betters your life? How is this in it? So again, I'm asking the questions. And sometimes clients are disappointed because they come to an astrologer, like they come to a psychic, they want the answers. And I have to say, I'm not here to give you answers. I'm help you. I'm here to help you clarify the questions. Because let's say you are up for some big thing. Let's say this is a big year for you in your life. We know we knew that 2020 was going to be a huge year for everyone on the planet because of the Saturn Jupiter conjunction was mostly in Capricorn for most of the year until it turned into Aquarius just at the end. And then Pluto joined. And guess what? 
historically speaking, when Pluto joins Saturn in, in it, Pluto and Saturn get together in Capricorn, there have been pandemics. So if you look two years ago at some of the leading astrologers' forecasts, they're saying, hope we don't have a pandemic in 2020. It's there. It's recorded on YouTube. You can see it. But the, the question is, all right, so we knew something big was happening in people's lives then, but we don't know what. Just because we know it's going to have something to do with Capricorn energy and Aquarius energy, no astrologer can tell you what is exactly is going to happen. And those that do are only giving you one of many options. And sometimes the way our minds work will take that option as truth and expect it's like, oh, you're going to change jobs next year. I can see Uranus is squaring your midheaven. You're going to, you know, look, go, go look for a new job. That's one option, but it's by no means a definite option. Or Jupiter is considered the planet of good luck and fortune because it's the planet of opportunity and it makes everything bigger. So people say, oh, Jupiter is, it, it, it's conjunct my sun. So this is awesome. So maybe yes, maybe no. Jupiter will bring you opportunities, but if you're not going to be thoughtful about whether or not you should take it, there's a shadow side to every planet, every energy, every sign. And inaction can lead you to the shadow side, right? Uh, Jupiter can bring you opportunities that you miss or it can bring you opportunities that seem good, but they aren't right for you. And had you spent a little time thinking about it and using your free will, you would know which opportunities are the ones you should go for and which are more likely to lead you down a rabbit hole. So yeah, um, okay. the, so astrology can help you with things like, oh, I can see that it's very possible. Cha I can see that a change in social status might be possible for you in a few months. What does that mean to you? So I use the astrology as the starting point for the coaching. I'm also a certified Martha Beck life coach. I'm also a positive psychology and self-improvement junkie. One of the things I got from a career in education was is a lot of familiarity with the applied research in cognitive psychology, applied neuroscience, and et cetera. So for me, the astrology is the starting point, and then we use the coaching to help the client figure out what it's going to mean to them. The astrologer should not be telling you what it means to you. Yeah, great point. And I love that you, it was probably because of your background and being a teacher that you sit in the seat of empowering others instead of being like the guru or the that person that's going to be the end all be all. Awesome. I love that about you, Deb. Great. We just wanted to take a quick break to talk about our sponsor for today's episode, Path 11 TV. Not a fan of watching videos on your computer or laptop? Neither are we. That's why we recently launched the Path 11 TV app for your smartphone and TV. Now you can watch on your iPhone, iPad, and Android devices. Or if you prefer to wind down in your living room, you can now watch on your Roku, Apple TV, and Amazon Fire devices. For listeners of the podcast, the easiest way to get started is by pointing your web browser to path11tv.com and starting a seven-day free trial. But be sure to use coupon code PODCAST30, again, that's PODCAST30, to take 30% off of an annual membership for maximum savings. Once your membership is started, visit your smartphone or TV's app store and download the Path 11 TV app. Once downloaded, you can then link to your newly created account and start streaming on the go or relaxing in your living room. Visit path11tv.com for all the details. Walk me through a little bit because you know I'm an entrepreneur, right? I have three, I think total of three businesses now. So for my listeners who are also either maybe contemplating starting their own business or they are their own coach or their own healer, they have their own Reiki practice or whatever the case may be. How would you work with somebody like me? Give me a little bit of a demonstration. And I know we're not going into like my, any of my information Deb had said too, that it takes her a full hour, if not more to really research and go into a person's birth date. But I'm just curious to know how the evolutionary astrology could benefit an entrepreneur like me to come to you to talk and 
get coaching and figure this out. So what, what's the process look like when people come to you? Let me begin by sharing how I got into it, because what happened was many of my clients, when I first started with uh, astrology-based coaching, were, many of my clients were entrepreneurs and they were either about to start businesses or they had just started businesses or they were already had established businesses. So it turned out that a lot of their concerns and a lot of the work that we were doing was looking at their business. And I discovered as I'm doing this work that, yeah, evolutionary astrology has a lot to do with their lives as a business because on a couple of on a couple of levels, but I'll tell you the main premise is, and I've said it, I said it before and I'm going to say it again, all of the astrology and the coaching that I do is based around the evolutionary intent. We are here with karmic baggage from past lives that give us limiting beliefs, irrational fears, default behavior patterns that impede our progress. Our goal in life is to identify and release those unhealthy behavior patterns and to get out of our comfort zone and embrace our evolutionary intent. And that is right there in the birth chart. That information is there. So it really doesn't matter what we're looking at, whether it's your life, your business, your relationships, your, your relationship with money, abundance. It all comes down to, are you working on releasing past life baggage? Are you embracing your, your evolutionary intent? And my first client was myself. <laughs> and I'm almost, it's almost embarrassing to admit that when I left higher ed and I really consciously embrace that I was going to be using my intuitive psychic abilities, energy, sensitivity, and astrology in service for coaching others. And then when I was looking at my own birth chart, which I, you know, had seen lots of times before. It was right there. It was right. It was screaming at me that teaching and in a traditional format was my past. That was a part of my past lung signature. And that my evolutionary intent was all about this spirituality, spiritual approaches to life and teaching and being a coach and a guide. And I was like, oh my God, how was I so blind? I literally could have spent my entire career in higher ed and never embraced this. And you know what that means? That just means next lifetime, I would have come back to have to do this all over again, again and again, until I finally realized, okay, that's not what I'm so teaching is my past spiritual guidance or support or coaching is what I'm supposed to work on. So that's my first step for clients is, are they in the right business? I think we all know someone who is in a profession that makes them miserable. I, I have a friend, she wanted to be a doctor. She went to med school. She did her internships and residency and, and she realized she hated it. And that the only reason why she was doing it was to make her parents happy. And it was the scariest moment in her life when she decided to quit, to leave medicine yeah. and to do something else, but she'd never been happier. Wouldn't it be powerful to be able to help people before they invest all that time and energy? So are you starting the right business? Uh, Marie Forleo, I did her B-School years ago. And one of the first th programs before you start her B-School is a module called Start the Right Business. And so many people don't start the right business. And you'll see a lot of business gurus saying, just find a need of the market, provide the need, you presto, you have a successful business. What my model say, let's look at your birth chart and see what the right business is for you. Because maybe you're meant to be, have your own wellness studio, maybe you're not. Maybe you're meant to be an energy healer, but maybe you're meant to do something else. Let's look at the birth chart and do some coaching around, are you in the right business? And I, I would not come out and tell a client, oh my God, you are so in the wrong business because that's not my job. My job is to show them what's in the chart and explore it and see what resonates for them and what doesn't resonate for that and do the really in-depth in coaching. So that's just one way. Another way is you have a business, let's say it is aligned, 
And to be perfectly honest, most of my clients, they are in a business that's very much aligned with their charts by the time they get to me, but they want to grow it. It's, it's hard to get a business off the ground. And marketing, of course, is the key path to growing your business, but there are so many different ways to market. Should they have a YouTube channel? Should they do a podcast? Should they write a book? Should they just rely on referrals? Should they speak from the stage? Should they maybe just have an email course? They're not all right for everyone. It's not just a matter of finding this guru that says, oh, do this my way and I guarantee you six figures, right? That's not what it's about. What is your communication style? Where is your natal mercury? And what's your comfort style with networking? So what I saw was that the birth chart, the 12 houses that represent 12 areas of our lives are also really nicely aligned with 12 aspects of having your business. Currently writing a book about the astrology of business where I describe this model and I was just very impressed with how nicely it lined up with entrepreneurship and, and the birth chart. So I started trying that out with my clients in a more mindful way, testing out the model. I interviewed about 25 women business owners to test the model out. And I've been continuing with my clients and it's really, I'm quite excited about it. So now to answer your question, so how do I work with the client? I have something that I call the business astrology of business, business astrology audit or astrological business audit. You can see Mercury retrograde. No, just kidding. So it's the astrological business audit where it's a four session package where first we take a deep dive looking at your birth chart. So what is your life's curriculum and how does it align with your business? And then the second one is a look at the current transits and progressions, which is what is the current position of the planets for this coming year, how is it impacting your curriculum? I like to describe it as if the birth chart is your whole life's curriculum, the transits and progressions tells you, okay, right now you're in fifth grade. What's your fifth grade curriculum? Next year you'll be in sixth grade. What's your sixth grade curriculum? Because we can't work on everything at the same time. So the transits and progressions tell us, all right, this is what you should focus on this year. This year for you, it's all about creative self-expression. Don't worry about that, the finding the right partner, finding the right the investor. Right now, I focus on this. So that's part two is the trends progressions. And the third part is an in-depth interview, exploring everything about their business. And then the fourth part is where F I take, I analyze all that data together and I give a an um, action guide given the three sessions, this is what I recommend that you work on in order to align your business with your karmic path and to help grow it, increase joy and reduce stress and overwhelm. Because oftentimes clients will come to me completely stressed out about their business. And it's because they were forcing themselves into an activity that really wasn't well learned. Let's say you've got a very introverted and shy signature in your chart and Maybe you're not here to be center stage. Maybe that's not part of your path to be the, to have all eyes on you. Maybe you're supposed to be more of on the side, out of the picture. So why are you speaking on stages with a thousand people and throwing up beforehand because you're so nervous? And then on the other hand, another client might be shy and introverted, but in their chart that this is a real growth opportunity for them. They're here to learn to come out of their shell, to learn to take center stage. That person might, might feel this instinct to go speak in front of groups of people. And yeah, they're afraid, but they learn some tips for public speaking and they realize they love it. You don't know until you really explore, and I'm not saying astrology is the only way to do it, but it certainly is a quick and easy way to do it. What about messaging? There are different ways to try to sell something to someone. People talk about pain points versus helping them get what they want, or do you approach it as a friend? Do you approach it as an authority figure? You know, well, someone with a lot of Capricorn and Saturn, they might really be attracted to authority. Uh, figures. And they might want to listen to someone who's got those degrees and certifications. And, and so another, but another person 
I don't know, may distrust authority. And if you come and if you approach them as someone who's very authoritative and knowledgeable, knows everything and is here to just impart their wisdom to you, you're going to turn them off. So learning more about your own natural communication style and learning about other people's communication styles, you can use the astrological archetypes to help have a better fit and even find who your niche audience is. I know that I'm never going to be the business coach for people who have a very competitive dog eat dog. I've got to be number one. I've got to, because that's not really, that's not the style. That's not what I have to offer, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. It does. And I love the part that you were talking about the past lives and looking at that and seeing that in the chart, because I could assume it makes me curious about my own because it makes me wonder, like, I know and have an intuitive sense that I've done enough past life regressions to know that I was a healer in many lifetimes. But like you're saying, that might be the old stuff when like, here I am and I'm doing it again. But like something might be like something else could be calling to me, but it just is so comforting and knowing that this is probably something that I've done for many lives. But having that information and knowing it might give me or somebody else more freedom to say, oh, but I've always wanted to explore this. So yeah, maybe it's okay for me to say, okay, I've done enough lifetimes being a healer, but yeah, what if I open up this side of me and who I am through business and and an entrepreneur? I love the aspect too, because, and this brings me to my next question, Path 11 is run by two people myself and Mike. So it's not just my business, but, and we were just looking at, because we just launched Path 11 TV, we're looking about at how to better market it. How do we get it out there? Because it's great, but people need to know it. It's wonderful if it's a great product, but if nobody knows about it, then, you know, nobody knows about it. So this comes at a very opportune time because Mike and I might need to come together to have a session with you. But what do you do with people that are like two business owners, that there's a partner or multiple partners? Because I would assume that one, your business partner has to be in alignment with this type of stuff to say, hey, let's go get our birth charts read. But can you look at two birth charts of two business partners coming together and then picking up the strengths of each, the weaknesses of each, and how this can help the business? Absolutely. That's exactly what I would do. First, I would look at each one individually and and say, oh, and I'll say, oh, I see with all this Pisces and Scorpio energy, you're probably very in, intuitive and connected energetically and you have this instinct for healing, right? And maybe your partner has a lot of Virgo and Capricorn and, and it's okay. I see really have a strive to succeed, ambition to build something that lasts. And that's great. That's a great partnership because it complements each other. But I can also say, all right, here are some areas where you might find some friction and forewarned is forearmed because when you know that this person really, people like to make fun of Virgo, so I'm sorry to pick on Virgo, but Virgo energy really has great attention to detail and needs everything to be organized and just right. And if you say you're going to have something done by two o'clock on Friday, it better be done by two o'clock on Friday or you mess up the whole thing. Whereas like Pisces, which is the polarity point to Virgo. And it's, yeah, I was just, I'm working with the energy just blocked. So I need to meditate. I, I'm going to need another couple of days with this. So you get it. So you look at what each person is here to do. You look at what each person's strengths and challenges are going to be, and you find where you where the two of you support and complement each other, and you find where the two of you are likely to have friction. And then you can really, with that knowledge, you can run with it and together build something that you're both that works for both of you. Yeah. Oh, it's so interesting. All right. I wish Mike was on this call. He used to sit in the background and do some of the tech and audio, but now it's just kind of me. So I know that when he edits this, I'm going to be like, okay, so we got to go and talk to Dev. Let's get a session. So this is wonderful. I'm so glad that I met you and just hearing about astrology this way opens up my eyes to just a whole nother avenue and a different way to look at it. I am sure a lot of my listeners are going to be wanting to book a session. They're probably going to want to email you and get parts of their birth chart there. But how do people work with you? So let us know where they can find you and how to maybe sign up for that four package deal and what you have to offer. Great. The best place to go is to my website 
debperettes.com, D-E-B-P-E-R-E-T-Z. It's important, don't forget the T, <laughs> dot com. And that from there, you can see, you can sign up for a free strategy call if you'd like. I like to to just offer some free advice. I don't, I won't actually look at your birth chart, but I will do coaching and I'll use my intuitive. I'll connect to your energy and any hits I give, I'll share. I have my new podcast, which I am relaunching. I had launched a couple months ago and then I had to relaunch Planets and Profit, Business Astrology for Entrepreneurs, where I interview entrepreneurs about their journey. And then I interject a few astrological insights showing how it's reflected in their birth chart. So that's been a lot of fun. That's uh, for education. I have a monthly new moon meditation that's free that everyone's um, welcome to join. It's again on my website. You can see it. And I have other offerings. So reach out, send an email, come get onto my email list. And I'm happy to send you your birth chart with a brief video that kind of deconstructs these are the parts of the birth birth chart. This is what we're talking about when we're saying a planet and a, and a sign and a house. And uh, I would love to hear from anyone and welcome to join me on this exciting journey that we're all on. Hey, thank you, Deb. And for those of you that do reach out to her, let her know that you heard her here on the Path 11 podcast. And Deb, if you'd like to have me, I'd love to be on your podcast. I'd like to sit in the other seat and I'd, it would be really interesting with all the different businesses that I've started and I'd love to be a guest. That would be You anticipated me because as soon as we ended, I was going to ask you. <laughs> all right. Great. We are LinkedIn. We are on the same wavelength. This was so great. Such a great conversation. I hope you all learned a lot from this. I hope those of you who are entrepreneurs or budding entrepreneurs, contact her. This is the first person that we've really had on the show that feels to me intuitively can really help you. So I hope that you head on over to her website, take advantage of that beautiful free gift that she is giving you. And we will have all of this in the show notes. So take care, everyone. Until my next guest, I hope you are all doing well, and I will talk to you all soon. Take care. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's show. If you haven't already, please subscribe and rate and review the Path 11 podcast in Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Also, this podcast is made possible by our sponsor, Path 11 TV. Visit path11tv.com to start a seven-day free trial and start streaming over 100 hours of exclusive video content on consciousness, healing, and life after death. That's path11tv.com, and be sure to use coupon code PODCAST30 to take 30% off your annual membership. Start satisfying your spiritual curiosity with a membership to Path11TV today. Bye for now.